Greetings! I am Herbert Erberb, and today I'm going to build this 15mm scale plastic ZIS, or is it pronounced ZIS, gun battery for Flames of War. The back of this box is fairly useful. Not only does it let us know that these models are suitable for mid and late war, and that the kit can make either 57mm anti-tank guns or 76mm field guns and associated crews, but it also has a simple assembly diagram. More detailed assembly instructions are available at flamesofwar.com. A link is in the description. Inside the box there are four of these gun sprues. They are quite nicely detailed and are free from errors and only have very minor mold lines. They also include a table for the staff team. There are also four of these crew sprues. You only need five crew per gun, so there is a spare one on each sprue. They're definitely not perfect, but they do look fairly decently detailed for 15mm scale and are relatively well cast. There is a baggie of bases, and some polyester resin figures for the HQ, OP and staff teams. These aren't as good as the plastic crews. They're much softer and for the most part are not quite as well cast. I wish they'd made them in plastic to go with the rest of the kit. Oh well, let's put these together. The guns themselves are fairly quick and simple to build. I remove what little mold lines there are from the parts, and then glue the wheels onto the gun frame. The wheels aren't keyed at all, and the fit isn't very tight, so you do have to be careful to ensure the wheels are on straight. This can be a little bit fiddly, but plastic glue takes long enough to dry that you should have plenty of time to make any adjustments. Like the frame, the gun doesn't require much in the way of cleanup, but like most models, it does need some. I've chosen to use the 76mm ZIS-3 field guns, though the process would be the same if you wanted to use the 57mm. To enhance its appearance further, I drill an opening in the muzzle brake because it just doesn't look right to me with a solid end to the gun barrel. I expand the hole to taste and clean it up with my knife. Next, glue the gun into its frame. You can not angle it to either side, but I wouldn't go too crazy with that or you might encounter troubles attaching the gun shield. The obvious next step is to attach the gun shield. Be sure to glue it to the correct part of the gun. This is probably the trickiest part of the gun assembly because there isn't much of a surface to actually attach the gun to. Not that it's particularly hard to do, just a little bit fiddly. Be sure you get the gun shield on straight. That's all there is to building these guns. Very easy and straightforward. I think they look rather nice. Now for the crews. These are the included bases. Not particularly interesting, but it is nice that the artillery bases aren't all identical. The crew figures themselves aren't too bad. They do have reasonable detail and not much in the way of mold lines, though they do have some ugly excess bits of plastic, such as the huge chunk joining some of their helmets to their guns. They're 15mm scale, so I guess it's understandable, and I have seen much worse. I cleaned up those parts as best as I could with my knife. Now to position them on the base. There is one extra hole on the bases, so I fill it with the provided filler part. I then place the gun where I think it might eventually be glued down. I then spend a bit of time placing the crew figures in various positions around the gun. What I'm trying to do here is tell a story and place the crew in such a way that they appear to have a purpose, and not just be dudes glued randomly to a base. You can see that I've got the loader here loading a shell, with another loader waiting. Two dudes seem to be pointing at some kind of threat maybe, and I assume the guy with his fist out is holding a rope which fires the gun. Unfortunately, with only six figures to choose from, this is a little bit limited. I glue the figures and space filler into position, but at this stage I don't glue the gun down. Next, I moved on to the command, observation and staff teams. As I said before, these are made from polyester resin. They're not quite as nice as the plastic crew, and I wish they'd made these in plastic as well. As you can see, this guy had a large flap of flash on his shoulder, which I cleaned up. These figures have to be glued to the bases using super glue, which isn't really a big deal, just something that might not be obvious. I do like this radio operator. It's like he's laying there casually chatting. So, what you thinking about? Oh, you know, artillery stuff. <laughs> You can see the details on these are a bit soft. They are 15mm scale, so it isn't really going to be that visible when they're on the table anyway. They just look a little bit meh up close. Also, it might just be my glue, but the super glue seems to bond these figures really quickly, so I didn't quite get this fellow positioned exactly how I wanted him. You can see how soft and flexible this material is. The instructions on flamesofwar.com say this stuff feels and behaves like hard styrene, but I disagree. You'll need to be quite careful to avoid breaking these figures. Anyway, I glued down a table for the staff team, and then added a couple of the smaller ammo boxes from the gun sprue. They include two sizes of ammo boxes which I thought was pretty good. You could call it complete there, but I wanted to make my artillery bases a little bit more interesting. Also, I didn't like the gaps between the figure bases and the brown base, so I filled those with green stuff. This isn't particularly difficult, just spread the green stuff around and smooth it out. Be sure to keep your tool wet so it doesn't stick. 
To take it a step further, I added two more smoothed out mounds of green stuff, and then I pressed the spade like bits on the end of the gun's frame into it. The idea here is to simulate dirt pushed up as the gun digs in when being fired. Be sure the gun is wet before you press it in so it doesn't stick. I then glued on one of the open ammo boxes. Back to the green stuff, I apply another thin layer towards the front of the base where the gun's wheels will go. I then press the wheels in and roll them about. I also use a wheel from another model to roll in some tracks. This isn't a huge detail, but I feel it should add a little bit of interest to the model when it's painted. If you don't want to do this yourself, I do believe Battlefront sells sculpted bases for these guns. Of course, we can also add other odds and ends. In this case, I've added a fallen tree branch from Battlefront's Rural Bases kit, some more of the ammo boxes, and a couple of resin tree stumps from Secret Weapon, which I think are quite nice. That's about all. I didn't bother with the green stuff on the command bases. The gaps aren't as big there and I'll probably hide them with grass anyway. I have mixed feelings about this box. I think the guns themselves are awesome. I really like them. They went together very quickly and easily and they look great. I imagine they're a lot better than their metal counterparts. The crew figures are reasonable. I'm not the biggest fan of 15mm scale infantry figures to begin with, but these aren't awful. Much better than the metal ones that I've dealt with in the past, certainly easier to clean up. The HQ, Observer, and Staff Teams however, I don't much care for. If they were plastic like the gun crews, I think they would be a lot better. The polyester resin doesn't seem very good. It's way too soft and it doesn't seem to be as well detailed as the plastic. It kind of reminds me of Games Workshop's fine cast. Overall though, not really a big issue. I have other HQ and Observer teams I can use if I really want to, and the staff team does look kind of interesting. Everything should look fine when they're painted and viewed at a distance on the gaming table. That being said, I won't be painting these for a while, not until after I get some more bigger artillery pieces to go with these guns, so stick around for that way down the track. This is another excellent plastic kit from Battlefront, and even though I don't have a metal version of this model to compare, their plastic releases are usually vastly superior to their metal and resin models, at least in my opinion. What do you think? Leave any comments you might have in the comments section below or on Facebook or Twitter, which are linked in the description. Hopefully this video has been helpful or interesting. Thanks for watching. Farewell.